you change the way you look at the data depending on what's the context and what you are working on. Welcome to the State of CRM podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Ben. And this week, we're going to talk about something that marketers spend a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of thought and energy trying to figure out and optimize, and that is attribution. So we're going to discuss a little bit around what attribution means for CRM marketers, talk a little bit briefly about some of the different models that exist, and then actually go into, is there maybe a different way that that marketers can be thinking about attribution? When is it important? And is there energy that could be spent in other areas, potentially? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the show. Um, So attribution, you said, Matt, that's a big topic. Uh, That's not only specific to CRM, but... um, that's related to digital marketing uh, and uh, and all practices in, in marketing. So why it's so difficult, so important? Um, any uh, input on that first to start yeah. with? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I think there's a lot a lot we could discuss around why why attribution is so difficult, and I think it goes, you know, back to the fact that. You know, we've talked a lot about why digital provides so many opportunities, and I think that's table stakes at this point. But, you know, back when it was just a few different media that, that people were paying attention to, it was fairly easy to understand what type of exposure, what specific exposure potentially drove a conversion. Yeah. Uh, but now we're in a world where TV in and of itself is fragmented, print is fragmented, audio, radio is fragmented. You have mobile, you have email, you have social, you have display, you have video, you have search, you have uh, you know your website. So it's, it's, it's like, how do you actually figure out what the consumer journey is in a landscape where there are so many different touch points and not just that the the number of touch points matter but the order in which the the consumer is exposed to those channels and your messages across those channels actually matters a lot too and that's what marketers are trying to figure out and why it is so complex and then in addition to that and this has kind of always existed but there's there's obviously touch points that exist you know between a consumer and a brand or a product outside of what attribution models can even capture. And arguably, those moments may matter the most. You can't capture a great in-store experience with an awesome customer service representative. You can't capture powerful branding in-store or an optimized website and the impact of that specifically through an attribution model. Like, sure, you might be able to give more weight to a site visitation, but that experience is not going to be captured within, you know, a single data point in your model. So ultimately, that's that's what makes it so difficult to optimize. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, there are so many different, I said that, so different channels, but also so many different attribution models. I mean, the attribution of the conversion of an action, an event to a specific marketing action exists almost forever. Uh, and even before digital, that was already existing, and we were, as marketer, trying to identify what direct mail campaign triggered a conversion or uh, a billboard on the road, yeah. whatever. Um, it's communication and marketing uh, communication. With digital, come the data, more tracking, more capabilities to do that, which is nice. Um, the issue is that. Today, the tools, and uh, we can mention one that a lot of uh, people are using in marketing, uh, which is Google Analytics. Tools are by default. Their default setting is something that was created in another context years ago, decades ago. Uh, And we are talking, when we talk about Google Analytics, the default setting is a single touch Point. I mean, single touch point attribution model, the last click or last touch point. Uh, that will do or help you to understand what's the revenue generated by a channel based on the last interaction. So you are saying that the attribution of one event of, of sales in a, in, a, in, a, in a specific case of a business is attributed to the channel who just made the last pass, the, the last thing before the conversion. And you're just ignoring everything else 
that happened before. So for sure, I, I can already hear uh, people in the audience saying that, oh, but that's not the way we do that. Uh, today we are able to have other type of attribution model for sure. So single touch point uh, uh, attribution model exists. Multi touch points attribution model exists. Weighted attribution model exists. So you can have a last click, a first click, uh, U-shape, linear, uh, I mean, you all, have, the, all the letters of the alphabet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have so many uh, way of of doing uh, attribution model and attribution in measuring this journey, the different touch points during the journey. But yet, even though all of that is accessible in Google Analytics or other analytics tool, like in three clicks, you can see and compare the impact if you change uh, on a channel. If you change the attribution model, nobody is using it. I mean, not nobody, but the reflex day to day that's not i mean there is one choice there is one choice imposed by the in the company and that because we are doing that forever or for that been 10 years that we are looking at the last touch uh, attribution model we are keep doing that and some of the channel in marketing are more bottom of the funnel some are more top of the funnel depending on what you want to look at and, and analyze you might be changing the, the model to be more in detail if you want to compare different campaigns together uh, and not comparing different channels together. So there are lots of ways and all of that, I mean, my point is there are a lot of models existing. They are existing in the tool. Unfortunately, as a marketer, we don't use them as much as we should or we don't switch from one to each other to compare different things as much as, as we should. I really, I mean, I remember, uh, I have two, two, two mention uh, on that, the two, two anecdotes. I remember when I was doing the, I mean, really heads on uh, for in, ma in digital marketing, like that was my 10 years ago, 12 years ago. We had Granitics, we had another uh, other tool to, uh, to measure uh, the performances. We were looking at already to, we are looking at these different models, but different, not, every day and we were not looking at only one for the whole attribution that's my focus was to take one model or two and compare the impact when i want to look at the journey the different touch points in the journey of a, of a, uh, a customer and when we had a focus on one channel and we wanted to also maybe weight differently different type of campaign different type of bid uh, if that was about uh sem uh I mean, that's you change you change the way you look at the data depending on what's the context and what you are working on, and that was already the case ten years ago. Uh, and accessible that just improved. I mean, the the capabilities from from Google today from analytics are just uh, huge. Uh, the capacity of computing. I mean, the data to 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 ingest the, the volume of data, getting all the offline. Uh, touch points into the tool to insert that in the journey. Everything can be done, uh, but that it takes time. And unfortunately, this time is not often, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> used to uh, to uh, to do that. And and that can be a challenge, especially when the single touch uh, point that is the last touch point. For, I mean, make a lot uh, of. Um, give a lot of weight or importance to page channel that are different than CRM. Yeah. Uh, and that's a, they are just conversion channels. Yeah, it's interesting to think about why, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious as to why marketers spend so much time on it because you can kind of go down this rabbit hole of, to your point, like how much does one specific channel contribute to a conversion versus another specific channel in a world where the consumer journey is so complex and then mobile's kind of thrown this whole additional wrench into it as people like are, are consuming content and, and their attention is being spent in completely new ways. Um, yeah. And, and you know, that's, uh, I was mentioning two, two examples, but this mo I mean, that was no later than this morning. We are talking with potential customer and simple question. That's okay. What's we, we are, we are selling a CRM solution. We are CRM technology, a company. 
in your marketing mix, what's the weight, what the importance of your CRM action? And we are talking about email, uh, using email uh, in the CRM channel. And when we hear the reply saying that, oh, we measure that on Google Analytics, and that's an e-com company, so only online. We measure that on uh, analytics. The CRM impact, the, the, the impact of our email program and, and communication is 0.6% of the revenue. Yeah. I mean, what are we talking about here? Yeah, that's crazy. Because you are using the last click attribution model, you have 0.6% of the revenue attributed to your action. And what's the decision you make off of that? Is it, it's, it's, it's <laughs> what, you just get rid of your email campaign? I mean, I mean that's why, our, first, why are we talking to each other today? But in a broader view, that if the management of the company is yeah. really believing in that, the fact that all these efforts to produce email and strategy and campaigns bring dot six percent of the revenue, the only action you take from this learning is to fire the entire CRM team. There is no other, I mean, if you believe that it's true, there is no other conclusion to do. I mean, fire yourself if that's what you, if you think that it's what's all the effort you are putting together to send emails like this and that generating dot six percent of the total revenue of the company, that is not a retailer with physical store and the, the weight can be different and, and small in this case. That's just pure e-commerce online. So no, there is an issue on the attribution and the way you look at the results. So maybe something to do in this case is stop talking about attribution and look, start looking at contribution of different channels in the journey to convert. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think like, um, you know, that's, that's, that's an interesting point as well because I think it just sort of like highlights that you know, attribution itself is, is, is fairly difficult and there's some challenges that kind of play into it. You know, one being if like to your point, if you're sort of just focused on on the attribution of one specific channel, you're going to make like a probably the wrong decision based off of that, which highlights something interesting to me. That's if that is the case, more companies would be making decisions based off of that data. But I think there's a big disconnect between the data that marketers are receiving and an actual action in making a decision. So they're so focused on kind of understanding how attribution um, can be optimized to inform activation, yet there seems to not be a ton of decision-making at times based off of that information. So it's almost just like getting data for data's sake. And so I think like there's, you know, a lot of energy being spent on that, but potentially maybe um, to your point, better ways to kind of look at it by using potentially a contribution model. And I mean, I think in and of itself, like, you know, there's, there's some things to think about in terms of like the energy you want to spend on attribution, for example, like uh, the upcoming privacy regulations, which we talk about just about in some shape or form on every single podcast, I mean, that attribution in and of itself, the measurement of and the ability to capture the data that informs those models is just going to continue to be more difficult to, to understand and to utilize. Um, so, I mean, I think that's a valuable point when kind of thinking about which sort of model you want to lean into. And then ultimately, if you want to get to the goal of understanding contribution, like what percent is my email versus my social versus my SMS contribute to a potential conversion, that essentially means that you are going to have to be able to collect that d the data points on not just where those touch points occurred, but when, and also the sequence within that journey. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to optimize that. And then ultimately, again, kind of going full circle, the, the most difficult thing is going to be to understand how that informs activation. Because ultimately, what you want to play, like you'd want to use that to, to understand like, hey, I'm going to hit these consumers with email first and then SMS, <laughs> and then social, and then display, and then they are the most likely to convert after that. So you're going to have to hit them at the right order in the right time. And it's just like very, very difficult, I think, to action these models in an effective way. I'm not saying that they're not useful, but that's, that's a lot of time and energy being spent on something that's actually very difficult to do. And if we look at that with another angle, what just, you just what you just said in that, okay, you describe a journey with a different a sequ a sequence of different channels. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's true for who? You individually, me individually, or for a group of 10,000 people in your database? 
No, the average number of touch points and the sequence of the different channels, if you do that and you average it for a group of people, I'm not saying it, even not talking about doing one journey and evaluating one journey for the yeah. entire database, even if you have segments and subgroup of people, that's not working. That's an average number of touch points and channels sequence for the average people in, in, the, in this group. What about the people who are not average? What, they are, what, what is their need? What's their conversion look like? What's their journey with your brand looks like? Yeah. And another thing that you were mentioning, that's, yeah, that's really nice to collect the data, uh, but be careful if you are missing one type of, uh, of touch point in the journey, you might learn wrong thing because you don't know where that this touch point is based or uh, where it uh, appear in the in the journey what happened during this touch point and so say so, okay maybe the sequence email social uh, email search is working or you just miss the fact that this person who, or all these people who are converting who are doing this journey they are sp they are spending time in front of their TV and you have actually an ad running on TV or they are taking their car every single day to go to work and they just see this billboard next to the, the highway every single morning. I mean, yeah. how do you in integrate that? How do you know that there is an impact or not from the billboard in this journey? Yeah. I mean, so everybody missing consumes. Data. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody, like what do the data points actually mean as well? Because it's everybody is consuming media and using media in different ways. Yeah. So like, um, I mean, the order for one person might not represent another person. Like to your point, maybe there's a heavy TV watcher versus somebody who's attached to, you know, social networks on their mobile phone, et cetera. So the buying journey in terms of like the, the impact of media on influencing that conversion is very different for each single person. And so like in and of itself, it's almost impossible to create relevancy through attribution models alone. Yeah, that's I mean, 100% true. That's just maybe a waste of time <laughs> yeah. because because all this time to do more, to learn more, to try to find rules that you actually can't activate or activate accurately, can't deploy to your entire database, uh, why doing that? Yeah. I mean, why spending time on that? Because we did not even touch base on the fact that the content itself is maybe more important. Let's take an example of a very simple journey, two touch points. I receive an email and then I receive an, uh, a text or SMS and it happened that I convert uh, in store. Yeah. I received the email and you received the email. You won't react, we won't react, Matt, the same way to the same content. So that's not because I, re I reacted and I converted of after a second of email SMS and I went to the store that every people in the database that looks like me mm. will react the same way to email and SMS. They won't react the same way to the same content. So maybe for you, that will be really more useful to have email, SMS, but with different content. And therefore, the number of touch points, the type of channel bring nothing. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's kind of like, kind of the pitfall we keep falling into with digital. I think when we were talking about this, you mentioned that digital still has such a long way to go. Like we've never had such a wealth of data, but like people aren't just data points. And I don't mean to sound like philosophical about it but that's that's the reality like like there still needs to be that element of using messaging and strategy and content to build relationships with customers and ultimately yes you want to make sure they're exposed and they have to see your messaging but the most important thing is to make sure that you're creating relevancy for them that they can can relate to what you're you're sending out or that it's something that's interesting to them like you know, something that they actually want to buy because you can put them down the most sophisticated, optimized journey that you possibly can. 
But if it's not even for something that they would be interested in purchasing or the messaging isn't something that they can relate to, none of that even matters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we can push the, 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 the example to the extreme that in, in the journey you have two emails and by the way, there was a mistake, an error, and the email, went <laughs> they were sent empty. Yeah. There was a touch, a touch point. There was an email touch point in the journey, but there was no content. I mean, that will still reflect the same in your contribution attribution tools. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really important to give up data, to leverage it. But again, that's what are you trying to achieve with that is really important to, uh, I mean, that's really important to think about it and, and not keep being in this uh, hamster wheel of, oh, I don't have time to improve this part because I'm spending time on my reporting or I'm learning yeah. and, uh, to improve my journey and the number of touch points. Yeah. I mean, does it worth it? I mean, uh, yeah, th and that's, I mean. The reality of is it, is it too, like those, those touch points are important data points, but I think like marketers need to think about are there better ways that I can use them and potentially scale them? Because every every consumer interaction with every channel, every message, every click, every open, um, every conversion tells you something about that person. But I think like spending your time trying to figure out, okay, well, like, is it SMS first? Is it email first? That might be somewhat frivolous in the long run, especially if you're trying to do that for each single individual consumer. But what those data points can tell you is, what are those people interested in? When, why do they engage? When do they engage? What do they engage with? And what types of offers are they actually interested in buying? And those touch points can feed a model that can actually tell you a lot about each individual customer if you know how to use that data in the right way. And that's understanding what each person actually would be interested in, like how, why they would engage, and then optimizing content towards those things as opposed to, you know, frequency and cadences and journeys and sequences and things like that. Yeah, especially because all these sequences and, and journeys analyzed from past events. If as a human, I mean, we can't do anything about it. I mean, how this learning this work influence your strategy in the future? I'm curious to know. I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When is the last time that you actually changed your strategy based on the, on, on, on the results and the, the, your reading of the number of touch points and, and how they were organized? Yeah. I and mean, by the way, they are in the past. So they, were, they, are, they are in the past with a certain context Seasonality, I mean, just mentioning seasonality in the year, I'm not even talking about uh, pandemic <laughs> or, yeah. or, or travel restriction or change of, of uh, presidency. I mean, there are so many things that change in every day in our context and, and the way to react to uh, the context will also influence the, uh, I mean, the mood, the, the propensity to, or the interest for buying or engage, engaging with the, with the brand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, there's, if there is a marketer out there who feels like they've really nailed this, I would, I would love, love to hear from yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I mean. Because like, I, I have yet to talk to somebody that, that's very confident that they, they've sort of created this, this like these, these journeys or these experiences in terms of the sequencing of touch points across channels really well, um, you know, which, which ultimately I think is, is really interesting. Yeah, and so back to your point, so Matt's saying that we are not saying that the data, collecting the data and analyzing it is useless. It, it's super helpful if you look at all these data points to learn about individuals and what are their interests, what interaction, reactivation, uh, not reactivation, reaction they have, sorry, uh, with, with your brand, uh, which can lead to some reactivation campaigns. Uh, but but uh, no, the, the engagement you are generating with them, with which type of product, what is really interesting for your consumers, that's something that is really useful. And that's not something that you can optimize or maximize as a human, as a marketer. The technology is way more powerful for that. I mean, AI, the AI is replacing 
marketers, if we think that marketers' role is just to do optimization of journeys or learning data points about uh, analytics. Yeah, which we know it isn't. It's the marketer's role to be a strategic thinker, to understand and get inside the consumer's head yeah. and be able to create compelling, engaging experiences like impactful, creative, powerful messaging, clear value propositions, things that marketers are trained to be good at and why a lot of us got into this in the first place is yeah. because that's that's what we do is that sort of human-to-human -human connection, that effective communication, to your point, not robots that optimize journeys. Yeah, and so as a marketer, I really think that's the job, as you said, Matt's, is to work on the creative part, on the innovation part, on but innovation on how to highlight the product, how to better present the service. I mean, how to, maybe instead of spending hours studying the, the, the different models in your analytics, there are some tools that can help you to do that, get the output of these tools, and spend time to revamp your templates record this video uh, that explain better explain your service or your product yeah highlight the the, the product uh, in, a, in a different way in the in the, in in the templates use templates create templates uh, instead of say oh i can't do that i can't do more campaigns or, or be more targeted to more be more individualized because i don't have time to do all this creative and all of that i mean you have time that just how do you spend your time and how do you organize the time, avoid to spend time that can be done by machine, that can be done uh, by machine that will give you input to better inform your work of being a marketer and being creative. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the sense of it. Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, what, uh, what we want AI, machine learning, and um, sort of like automation to do is allow marketers to to get back to their roots yeah and uh common sense i mean back to the common sense uh, maybe a, a last a last uh, uh, thing for for the end to, to to wrap up the the discussion that would be curious i would be curious so i think you will be surprised if you add a form after a purchase online and ask a consumer what's really triggered their decision to buy the product or to purchase with your brand. What were, what's it about? I mean, asking them what about the experience they are living with your brand? What are the quality of the messages and the different channels they are exposed to? These kind of things and getting also this information from them might be different than uh, what uh, Google Analytics can tell you. I'd be guessing it would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. I mean, um, as you can hear, we are passionate about this topic. That's 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 a, a, a rough topic for for marketers. I mean, that's always been. Um, but um, yeah, that's really need to rub the sleeves and and really sort the good and the bad. I mean, the, the time spent on all of these topics and and uh, maybe uh, better balance uh, the the investment of time uh, on the topics. Yep. So thank you very much for listening to uh, to the State of Serum podcast. Really uh, happy to uh, to have uh, the audience, seeing the audience growing uh, week over week. We uh, will talk to you uh, next week. Yeah, really appreciate you listening in today. And thank you so much. And yeah, see you next week. See you next week.